The next application in my list is Leo's Flight Simulator. I have no idea how much time the developers spend on this because it's a quite complex flight simulator with a very extensive help. And I'm actually, well, even though now I'm playing Flight Simulator 2020, I do intend to take some time to explore it because it seems to be very well done and very nice. So when you log in, you get, well, you are on the runway, right? And you have an airspeed, you have your turn coordinator, and you know, you can see here the position of your rudder relative to the rest of the aircraft. And I think this looks like a two minute turn indicator. You have the artificial horizon here, your compass, your altitude, your climb rate, and you even have uh, two um, navigation radios here. So you can set up your view or your ILS here. I haven't tested it to, to see if it works, but it is here, yeah. Then here you get, um, you know, um, I, I think it's throttle, um, flaps and air brake but we will figure it out. Um, when you tap these indicators here, nothing really happens, but you can scroll to the side and then you get here light control, strobe lights, you have the brake, navigation radius, automatic direction finder, communication, you have some rudimentary autopilot here that you can turn on, I think, yeah. You turn it on and off, set up your heading, altitude. It's just really hard to tap on anything here. Back here on the file menu, if you go to options, you can divide the screen vertically. So the screen guide have the sound effects on. You can turn off crash detection or not or you can actually save your situation and uh, start up with uh, wherever you were before or back from zero, yeah. Go to aircraft. It actually has quite a variety here. So you have a 727, you have a Harrier, this person or the group building is really spent a lot of time on this. That's a flight baby. A mosquito. There's a check plane here. A Piper Cobb. A P-51, that's a really cool plane. A V-22 must be fun to try to control this on this application. Travel Air Mystery Ship. All right, let's go to, let's pick up the 727 here. Give some notes. All right, history of the airplane some information, so go to the 727. The interface is quite slow to react. You have here New York and San Francisco, or we will stay with San Francisco for now. If you go to display, and if it's going to load, now you can change the quality settings to improve your performance, but there's I think he means here MIP mapping, but what is MIP mapping? You can check how far you can load on. Also, if you get a newer system, I can actually try on my 600 megahertz device later on. You can, you know, see it further away. You can disable textures and etc. You can enable ATC, dynamic scenery, and you can change your uh, airplane registration number, how many planes you are generating. Let's see the glider stab.
if it will load. Ah, you can choose your tall aircraft. And there's even thermal support. I think it's not even in Flight Simulator 2020 yet, so hey. In com mode, I guess you can uh, do multiplayer here. You can have two Windows C devices. One can be the master, one can be the slave, and you can connect via uh, TCP IP or infrared. Here you can assign some keys. It would be nice to take some time to study this, but I really, really want. Then you can create your cloud layers, you can choose how they look like, and bottom and the top of each layer. And also set the winds, and here there is nothing, you can choose how much turbulence they will generate. So, quite complex. Let's go back here to aircraft and see if I still get what I selected active. Let's go to the 727, accept. I got a little bit of a different panel. What's the next? Select COM. I'm assuming I am in San Francisco, so I can go here to San Francisco International. Let's select departure. Not sure I have to manually see. Probably not. You can talk to the ATC. You can request a landing, for example. Doesn't make any sound, so I don't know what's going on. We go here. Oh, and it crashed. Let's go back to Leo's Flight Simulator. save and load situation and there is the about screen if I tap just the name of the developer good job here in view we can do external and here when you tap you get some options so you can the track external view you can zoom in and out go to the internal view remote control mode Look at the map, and if I don't know what it is. Um, you can also change between daylight and dawn. And if you go to scenery, you can see the side of the texture and the frequencies related to the area you're flying at. There is VOR information. So you can do some practical navigation skills and also a non-directional beacon here that you can choose. Time compress, so if you want to fly further, you don't need to wait. Here goes the options. And we crash again, so let's try another time. The second option goes, ah, show the scenery, all right. And here, if I go to help, let's see, until 1st of January of 2001, the program is free, then there'll be a license. Um, I can separate the panels, let's see, some of the, uh, about the aerodynamics. 
Ah, so explains the flight forces, how a wing works. A nice introduction to the controls. There's an explanation of all the options here. So there's optimization for vertical devices, which is great. Someone really put a lot of time into this. Very cool. All right, so let's see what happens here. Let me, uh, I'm assuming this is throttle, so let's Push it up, all the way up. And I am taking off. It was pretty well. And I have to say for handheld PC of the era, if you assume that, you know, computers at the time had maybe 16 or 32 megs of VRAM. Flight Simulator looks pretty much the same, but with a higher resolution and future textures, yeah, so it's pretty great. The frame rate is nice. I would say it's 15 to 20 FPS. We can set an external view here and see our airplane from outside. I can zoom in. Can I? Not. Right, it runs well, and I can come here to my panel and, for example, raise the gear. Maybe this airplane doesn't have retractable gears. And turn on the lights, the strobe. You see, now my strobe is on. And I find it very unrealistic that I'll manage to turn around and, la and land in such a small screen. But let's give it a shot. Also, I need to know how fast the, the plane is going. So let me just drag this back. The turn indicator is reversed. Well, I'm not sure I'm gonna get anywhere by, you know, feeling a bug report. So we have to leave with this. I had forgotten how difficult it is to fly with, uh, with a keyboard. So here's my runway. I'm never gonna manage to turn around, so I can just cut the throttle and try to crash land with style. I'll just land anywhere here. I may one day go full crazy and try to make a full flight on this thing to actually appreciate where we are. Uh, in terms of flight simulation and technology, yeah, so right, my full nose down, and I'm gonna crash. And uh, horrible controls. Uh, ah, I actually didn't crash. And can I break? Break. All right, I'm breaking, and yeah, I'm not dead. So this was Leo's flight simulator. Thanks for watching, and let's see what application we're we'll gonna review next.